Welcome back into CBS Sports HQ as we are getting you ready for day two in the beginning of round two in the NFL draft. It was a heck of a first round there. Uh, and some of these guys we did expect, for instance, possibly David Ojabo, most definitely Malik Willis, according to most, to see their names off the board in the first round, but they are still available. These are the five guys who are Scott Pioli's best available as we head into tonight, and he's going to break down each one of them for us and tell us why. Let's welcome in longtime GM, five-time executive of the year, Scott Pioli. Look, we had so much fun talking to you yesterday. We had to have you back today. Get ready for day two here. Uh, these guys are still on the board, and these are your best available, so we want to walk through each one. David Ojabo, and it seems, I mean, is it the injury that's scaring people away from him? Absolutely, Amanda. You know, when you look at the progress that he made last season, it was amazing. Everyone talks about Aiden Hutchinson, and Aiden is a fantastic player. But on the other side, they had a guy playing just as hard, just as skilled, just as talented, maybe not as refined in David Ajabo. Last year, I did some extra work for college teams. As you know, Michigan was one of the schools that I spent time at and worked with. I was out there in the spring, saw spring ball, also had a chance to see them in training camp. And then, of course, during the season, David Ajabo made as much improvement and has had as much of an ascension as any football player in college football that I watched last year. He just kept getting better week after week. And the other thing is, I mean, a lot of teams are talking about, okay, this guy may sneak his way into the first round. And then, unfortunately, what happens is he tears his Achilles at tendon, or ruptures his Achilles tendon, and it has knocked people off of him. Understandably so, because, again, a player that was developing and a player that is going to have to start your season more than likely on physically unable to perform. But to me, someone is going to get tremendous value somewhere in the second round. I can't imagine that he's going to drop to the third round. But someone is going to get tremendous value on a player who has first-round talent and abilities and is continuing, continuing to develop here today in the second or third round. Scott, the next guy on your list, Malik Willis and Ryan Wilson's final mock draft. Look, he had him going in the top 10, I believe, to the Falcons there. Here he is, day two. So many people didn't expect to see him here. What can we expect from Malik Willis tonight? Well, this is going to be an interesting one because there's a couple of teams in that second round in the early part or the top 10 kicking around the top 15 of the second round that will have a shot for him if they want to move up or if they sit still. And to me, there's a number of teams like the Vikings, the Falcons. I think Seattle has two picks. They have a chance to get a quarterback. They're all teams that need a quarterback. A quarterback they can bring in and start to develop because they're not going to be pressed to get him on the field immediately. So to me, this might be an interesting situation. Now, the one that surprised me or the, that I think about a little bit more is the Detroit Lions, who are taking, I think, the 46th pick today, uh, or 46th pick overall. To me, when I look at them, I wonder how they feel about the fact that Malik Willis was still on the board at number 32, where they could have secured him and had a fifth-year option on him and use him as the potential future to replace Jared Goff. But to me, he's a player that's sitting there that has so much talent, and I'm truly hopeful that he ends up in the best situation for him in a develop in a, a developable situation, if that is such a word, where he can become the player that he's capable of, Amanda. We can make anything a word these days. I make <laughs> words every single day. Uh, yesterday, we saw a massive run on wide receivers. Six of them go in the first round of the top 20 picks. And the one that you have is the first one in your best available list, Christian Watson. Why? Yeah, because I see skills, Amanda, that have his skills and his tools and his intelligence. He is a player who came along late, started showing out in the All-Star Games, had a terrific combine. And again, I think part of where he was playing at North Dakota State, the fact that he was where he was in terms of his, his player development in college, it was a little bit taken back. So I think he's a player who has, again, all the tools, all the mindset, and if he gets in the right place, he's going to continue to develop. So to me, again, I wasn't expecting him to be in the first round, but he's going to have a chance to go early in the second, middle of the second. And I think some team is going to be very, very happy. I actually like the colors that he's wearing right now at North Dakota State because he may be the perfect player to show up in Green Bay and get developed by a Hall of Fame quarterback 
who really knows how to develop second round picks and third round picks. And by all means, we were just waiting to see what the Packers did yesterday. Uh, and I like that. It's a little tease to what we're going to talk about here in a second. Let's talk about the guy coming in fourth on your list, tight end Trey McBride coming out of Colorado oh. State. Uh, I got to cover this guy a bunch of times talking to his coaches. They're like, look, we're just honored that we got to be a part of his process. I know Ryan Wilson is super high on Trey McBride as well, and so are you. Yeah, and Amanda, what happened was Frank Leonard, who was an assistant coach at Colorado State with Steve Adazio's staff, tipped me off about this player two years ago. And he said, Scott, there's a kid coming out of here that's going to be unbelievable. Frank Leonard was my position coach when I played in college. And when Frank Leonard said a kid is good and he's extremely tough, it is the real thing. Trey McBride, again, no tight ends went in the first round, which is pretty interesting. Trey McBride, by far the best tight end in this draft class. I think a team is going to get a real steal in the second round. You know what? Look out for the New York Giants to maybe make something happen because they really need to rebuild at that tight end position, which is so important to Brian Dayball. They got a good start yesterday. You know, a lot of New York teams, including the Jets, got a good start yesterday. All right, the fifth and final player on your best available, Arnold Evicady here. Uh, coming out of Penn State, how much value can a team find to this kid? Tremendous value because, again, he is a pass rusher. And, again, different but similar to Ajabo where his play is on the rise. He is on the come. He is developing into a better and better player. I remember spending some time talking to James Franklin about him, and he absolutely loves this kid and said to me, Scott, you know, he hasn't even touched the surface on how good of a football player he is going to be. So to me, I expect him to go pretty early here in the second round, and I think a team is going to have one heck of a fine when they get Arnold on their roster. If we could have a perfect match in the second round, as I mentioned, a little bit of a tease, talking about the Packers and maybe <sighs> some colors there. What would be your perfect match tonight? Amanda, to me, it's the Green Bay Packers at number 43 overall in the second round, nailing it with Christian Watson. Because, again, I mentioned a little bit of this before. He has all the talent. He has all the tools. He has the intelligence. He's played in a conference where they've had so not so friendly weather. So he knows how to play. He knows how to run. He knows how to change direction in some weather. When you play at North Dakota State, you're going to play some games in some pretty bad weather in some pretty bad places. Yes, there's some indoor places, but you're going to have to learn how to do that. So he already knows how to do that. And again, to me, the fact when you have an elite quarterback, the difference between a good, very good, and or elite quarterback is the guys like Tom Brady, Peyton Manning, Drew Brees, they can help develop players. Aaron Rodgers has done it himself. In the past, you look at this list of names that we're showing right now in terms of Lazard, Sammy Watkins, Randall Cobb. There's a couple of those players that have been there that were late picks, middle picks. There's a bunch of second round picks that Aaron Rodgers helped develop. And that's what the elite quarterbacks do, Amanda. And that may have a chance to happen if they get Christian Watson. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.